Hi everybody, this is Ellie. Thanks so much for joining me today for a video where I share my favorite stationery supplies. Maybe I should clarify when I say the word favorite. I am notoriously bad at picking favorites of anything because I am so indecisive and there are always so many great options. But the items in this video are things that I've used and enjoyed for at least a year, if not more. And I thought it might be fun to collect them all in one space. I think if you've been following me for some time, none of these will be a surprise, which hopefully shows that these are things that I actually love and use. I also wanted to add that I'm not here to enable anybody. If what you have is working for you, then it works for you and that is great. I'm just excited to share what's been working for me. I'm going to loosely structure this video and share in categories. First, I'll share the writing utensils that I use. Then I'll go through what I consider my stationary tools. And lastly, I'll share just a couple of sticker and washi shops that I use the most often. Let's start with writing. My current most used pen is this Pilot Acroball. This is a ballpoint pen and this particular version is a multi-pen. So it has a pencil, black ink, blue ink, and red ink in the 0 0.5. I have absolutely been loving this pen. I find that it doesn't skip for me and it has a tiny bit of dry time on the Tomoe River paper. But once it's dried, I can highlight over it, no problem. And it has just been really, really consistent. In terms of gel pens, I have a couple I wanted to mention. The first is the Pentel Energel Klenna. I do prefer the 0.4 tip size, although I used the 0.3 when I was in the Take a Note because it had the thicker Tomoe River paper. So this is another pen that has been very consistent for me. I used it a lot last year in my Wonderland 222. It's a nice thin but dark line. And because it's gel, you can't highlight over it after without smearing, but that was never an issue for me. I just would put the highlighter down first if I wanted to and right on top of it. My other favorite gel pens are the Zebra Sarasa Vintage in the 0 0.5. I have tried the Zebra Sarasa 0 0.5, just the black ink, and I find it inkier than these for some reason. Maybe it's just me, but I love how these write and I absolutely love the colors of them. This camel color is one of my all time favorites. I also find myself using fine liners on a regular basis, and these are probably no surprise to see on the list. These are the Le Pen Technical Drawing Pens in the 0 0.1 and the 0 0.05, which are my most used sizes. I just really enjoy these. I like the size of the barrel, which I find is a tad bit thicker than a standard size pen barrel and I like the tip and how it writes. The thinner tip, so the 0 0.05 and the 0 0.03, do tend to wear out faster, and because I have such a heavy-handed grip, for me, they wear out even faster than most. But for the 0 0.1 and up, I haven't found that to be a factor at all. And I mean, I used to have the Micron pens too, and the thin colors always just wear out and dry out faster. So these are great for anything that I want permanent writing for, or sometimes if I'm doing doodles. Why did I write Pentel? I am in these Le Pen technical drawing pens. I'll just write Le Pen technical, and this is the 0 0.1. When it comes to pencils, I do also have a couple of favorites. The first is this Zebra Delgard in the 0 0.5. I won this in a giveaway years ago from Tokyo Pen Shop, and this is just a solid pencil. I use this whenever I want to jot notes with a pencil, and I also use it when I'm reading if I want to underline anything. 
I just find it really, really comfortable. I like the lead size and I love tossing this in my bag. The other pencil that I use all the time is this Pentel Arends in the 0 0.3. So this is much thinner and I like to use this if I'm drawing any lines when I'm bullet journaling. I will also use it if I'm writing something down, for example, future planning, and I know I will eventually erase it and ink it in with pen. I like using this because I can write really lightly and it erases with nothing left behind. And when it comes to erasing, I just have a three pack of these. These are the Pentel erasers. I just like it because they're the same shape as a pen. They retract and they fit really well in all of my pencil cases. In terms of highlighters, I do prefer to use the Tombow dual brush pens instead of a traditional highlighter. I absolutely love the colors of the Mild Liner Neutral set and I have them and I've used them occasionally, but I have found that once I started using the brush tip, of the Tombows, I had a really hard time switching back to the chisel tip of a traditional highlighter. So mine are a little bit frayed because I've used them for so long, but since I'm not brush lettering with them, I don't need to replace them nearly as often. I've never replaced, I don't think I've replaced a single color yet. And lastly, we have brush pens. So my tried and true, like many others, is the Tombow Funosuke, and this is in the hard tip. This is a pen that I have been playing with and learning to use for years, and I just love how versatile it is. So you see, you can do some form of brush lettering. You can also use it to write, and it writes pretty thinly. I have seen people sketch with it. It very rarely bleeds through. It'll shadow, but it only bleeds through if I ink it way too hard on one spot and let it pool there. So this, if I could only have one brush pen, would definitely be it. And even if I don't want to use it as a brush pen, it's great for just emphasizing your writing because it is thicker than a traditional pen and you can vary the line widths. That said, if I ever do want to play with more bold brush lettering, I love using the Sailor Shikiori set. There are so many beautiful colors in this set. And like I mentioned, it's a much bigger brush tip. but you can see the colors are beautiful. I love how it kind of has that ombre effect, or at least it does for me because of how I press on it. And it also has a very fine tip on the other side. So much finer than the Tombow. And these are the writing utensils that I use the most often. These ones, the sailors are probably my least used just because I haven't been doing a lot of large brush lettering lately but they are my go-tos if I want this style. And where do I keep all of these? Well, I am someone who has collected a lot of pouches over the years, from leather pencil cases to the Delphonics pouches. And I love all of them for different reasons and at different times, but the case that has seen the most use by far for me is this Deldi case. This has been around for a while and very popular, so it is a standing case that just lifts up like that to close. And I usually have it on my desk with me, in my tote bag that's beside my desk, or if I'm going out, I will close it up and take it with me. So the only thing about this is that it isn't tall enough to contain the Tombows. Maybe if you angle it a certain way and only have a few, but for me, I'm never carrying a bunch of Tombows, so I just leave them towards the end there. Zip it like that, and it has never once been an issue. 
but just having this standing so that I can see everything that's in it has made it incredibly functional for me. Now let's move into what I consider my stationary tools, which is basically anything that isn't a writing utensil or some form of deco. First, I'll show you the rulers that I use the most often. This was a gift. I think it was from Chapters or Indigo, and I like it because it's thin but not sharp, and it's pretty flexible. It does also have some bullet journal templates. I've never used these, but it's fun to have the option. This one stays in my pencil case. The other one that I use a lot is this one here. This is obviously designed for rings. I think I got it in a two-pack on Amazon. And I like this because when the notebook has kind of those humps, even if it's laying flat, this will fold as much as you need it to. The only thing is I'm not convinced that this is totally straight because sometimes I cannot get it to line up with the grid the way I want. That said, the flexibility kind of overrides that for me. So I pull this out all the time if I'm using a thick notebook and it needs to be able to follow that curve. In terms of scissors, before I found this community, I never knew I would have a favorite pair of scissors, but I do. And it's these Cutter B scissors that I feel like most of you have seen. They come with this protector. I don't know if that has a name. They're small, they're sharp, they're great for fussy cutting. I actually have a couple of pairs just so that I can keep one in my pencil case for on the go planning and one in my desk. When it comes to adding in ephemera, I will use glue sticks if that's all I have on hand, but I prefer using a tape runner, specifically this Tombow Mono dot adhesive. So I just buy refills for it at Michael's. And the reason that I like this is because when you lay it down, it obviously comes out in a dot pattern, hence the name. <laughs> Just trying to see how well you can pick it up here. Okay, so before it totally dries, you can rub it. This is really hard to do because it's not on a flat surface. I'm just holding it in the air. But you can rub it like that to get off anything extra. So for me, I'm usually running it along the edge of some ephemera. And you know how when you do it right on the edge, sometimes it squishes out the top. With this, I can just rub that off before it completely dries and becomes permanent. So I find that really, really handy. When it comes to sticky notes, I have found that not all sticky notes are created equally, and I vastly prefer post-its to any other kinds that I've tried. These are the little ones I'll usually carry in my pencil case. So if I need to jot something small to put in my planner, I will use one of these. And this is what I have sitting on my desk. So you can hear that's the weight for it. This is by Post-it, I got it on Amazon. And I love it because it has enough weight that you can just pull the Post-it out one-handed. And then there's space here too for pencils or whatnot. You might have seen, I use post-its all the time when I can't get into my planner. I'll just pull one out, jot a couple of things from that day or, you know, the few days that tend to add up when I'm not in my planner. And then I will use it to back plan. I just love having these at hand. And again, I have found post-its to be A, the stickiest, and B, they don't leave a residue when I take them off. And I find that some off-brand sticky notes have done that. The only other sticky notes I have used on a semi-regular basis are these from Midori. And I just think these are adorable and that they fit into a lot of smaller calendars like some of the Hobonichi ones. And I find the stick on this okay. Again, I still prefer this. I also find that some sticky notes don't always take my pens nicely, whereas Post-its always do. But these are adorable and I haven't had any problems with them when I have used them. Along with the sticky notes go the tabs. I've used Avery tabs and I like them too. I do prefer post-it. I don't know why. Lately I've been using these clear ones. So I use these for example for my monthly tabs. So I just put permanent tabs right onto this and then I cut it to size. I've done the same thing with these colored tabs in the past. I usually try to cut off the colored part or most of it. And I've actually seen 
or heard that you can take off the colored bits with nail polish remover. I've never tried it myself, but I think it was Rachel Beauty Plans that I heard that from. So that's always an option too, but these are what I go for whenever I want tabs in my planner. I have got this guy here, which has seen a ton of use. This is the Sunstar Corner Rounder, and it has three different corner rounding options. So I just have this journaling card from Planner Monkey Co. so that we can see. So we've got the small, the medium, and the large. And I use this a lot if I'm adding in ephemera into my pages. I just like how clean it looks and I like that the three different sizes also give a little bit of a different look. So this has been great for me. And in terms of cutting and trimming, I do have a favorite paper trimmer and it is a Fiskars guillotine cutter that will fit 12 inch paper. And I will put a picture of it on the screen because it's too big to fit in this setup here. But I find that it is great for clean cuts and doing smaller, more incremental cuts at a time. I do also have this style of cutter. I'm not sure what this is called, which is great, but I find that the blade runs out pretty quickly and it also won't let me do a lot of incremental cuts. If I'm trying to trim a tiny bit, it just rips the paper. Maybe it's user error, but it happens all the time for me. That said, this is great for anything on the smaller side. Like when I'm trimming those tabs to size, I will often use this guy. So they're both great, but if I could only keep one, I would definitely keep the guillotine style. Then we have this favorite, which you might recognize. If you followed me last year, you'll know I use these on a monthly basis. And this is an alphabet stamp set that I got off of Amazon. It has the typewriter style font. We've got the lowercase, the uppercase, and the numbers. And I just find these so versatile and I love this style so, so much. The only ink I have ever tried or wanted to try is the Versa Magic chalk ink, which you can use on Timoli River paper with no bleed through. You will see ghosting, of course, but it does not go through the pages. I have a few different colors. Most often I am in the Midnight Black, but they have all been beautiful and this has definitely gotten its use over the years. And this is the newest item that I'll share. This is the Pooley printer and it's a thermal printer that I got for Christmas this year and I am absolutely loving it. So it prints off of a roll of paper like a receipt and there are a number of different paper options. I have the transparent sticky paper, which means it's essentially a sticker. It only prints in black and white and it is not the best photo quality. That being said, for me, this has been so, so wonderful because it is so thin and so easy to use that I find myself pulling it out a lot more than I have ever used my HP sprocket, which is fine, but the papers are expensive and they're also really thick to put in my planner. This guy, now that I'm saying it, I really think it's the thinness of the paper that is the biggest draw, followed by the fact that it's clear paper. Let me grab my planner so I can show you. So here, when we went to a Jays game, I just printed off a little picture of the ticket, some pictures from when I went to Toronto. I think there was also one here, yep, that just has text. And because it prints in a receipt style, even if you have a longer column of text, it will print that too. It's not always going to be the exact same size. So I have been really, really happy with this because this year alone, I have already printed more with this than I did in the entirety of 2022 with my sprocket. And the last couple of things in the tools category are things that I use for sticker storage. The first is this Midori folder. I absolutely love this. I have one in A5 size too but I have found myself using this much, much more. It has little tabs here. So there's one, two, three sections, and you can see the images just kind of build on one another because they're transparent. There's a lot of different designs. And I've just kept this kind of cardstock in the back to give it more structure. 
this slips really well into the pockets of my B6 planner and it's just wonderful. It's slim, it's portable, it's easy to access, and it's adorable. The other storage I'm going to share are these old favorites. These are the mesh pouches. They're some sort of plastic and they're great. This is the B6 size, the A5. I have added some labels for the way that I sort some of my stickers. And I just love that you can see in them and that they are durable. So I have used these for years and I love them. I've also gotten some larger sizes and gifted them to people like the document sizes and some packs have really small ones and I have only heard great things about how useful they are. The last thing that I wanted to touch on are stickers and washi tapes and the shops that I use the most often. So in terms of stickers, we have Planner Monkey Co, of course. I love her icon stickers. She used to have them on the white sticker paper only, but she has also started making transparent minis, which I love. I use her icons a ton in planning. The last couple of months, I haven't been using any stickers at all, but these all go back years. And I know that when I feel like using stickers again, these are the ones I will reach for first. We also have stickers from the Coffee Monsters Co. Her emojis are adorable and are throughout my planner for the last few years. And lastly, I have some stickers here from Paper Bits Co. So all of my stickers, in terms of character stickers, are pretty much taken off the sheets and put in my sticker binder. But these are some new ones I have. I love her bear character. It's one of my favorites. I also love her samplers. She has a really great selection and these are kind of great for on the go. And, oh, this is Lauren's <laughs> sampler from Theory of Lauren. And when it comes to washi tape, this is probably the least surprising shop. I would have to say my favorite washi tape shop is Note and Wish. It is run by a couple of sisters in the UK and I just love their style. It's soft. It's cottagey, it's cozy. I love everything about it. So they have some beautiful florals. They did this Kintsugi washi tape, which is one of my favorites. All of the cracks in the pottery are done with the gold foil, which I also think is just really clever. They have a lot of grids and plaids and neutrals like that. More florals, this beautiful kind of Romantic, spring, in my opinion, Jane Austen vibe. And this last one is also a washi tape that I got from them, but it's a different material. It's clear, but it does still come up easily like washi tape. So I just thought that also was unique and beautiful. Of course, this is only a tiny part of my collection of washi and stickers. I have so many by so many wonderful makers that I absolutely love. These are just the ones that I have been the most consistently drawn to over the course of years. I really enjoyed the process of going through my goodies to pull out and share my favorites. It shows me how my style has changed, has really honed down, and also reminded me that it will continue to change. It's also nice to remember that I don't need all of the stationary things that I've accumulated over the years and that helps me with again letting some things go passing them on to people who will love and use them now and kind of freeing up some of that mental clutter that it causes me so that I can enjoy what I'm truly drawn to and we can take this one tiny step further so if these are all my favorites I can tell you what I would pull if I needed to pack very, very lightly, but was still going to bring some planner goodies. So obviously I would need a pen and I would bring the Acroball multi-pen because it has the different colors that I need and it's not fussy in terms of dry time and highlighting. I would also probably bring both of these Le Pen technical drawing pens just because I find them so versatile, both for doodling and writing. I would bring the Tombow N89, even though it is a very light gray, if you go over it more than once, you can get a deeper color and I really like how it accents pages. 
If I were to bring a ruler, I would probably bring this one just because it works as an edge as well if I need it and it's still pretty flexible. I would need an eraser to go with this pencil. I'd bring a pair of scissors probably. My Tombow Fudenosuke and probably my tape runner. And this is really only if I'm adding an ephemera, which honestly, I don't do very often. So if I didn't have the space, this would stay behind and I would just bring home, <laughs> I would just bring home the ephemera that I wanted. I'd also throw in a small set of sticky notes. In terms of washi tape and stickers, I would really be okay leaving that behind as long as I have something to write with. And I guess this is still a little bit excessive. I could technically take this pen and be totally fine. And also this is an imaginary trip I'm going on. I have never gone on a trip where I needed to be extremely minimal with my hobby things that I bring along. But just to further hone in on my most, most used. I would love to hear what some of your favorite or most used items are. So please feel free to share in the comments. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.